As Ferrari have recently signed Mario Wug to its driver program and in the process becoming the first woman to join Ferrari's driver program, I thought it would be a good idea to make a video about the women who have competed in Formula 1. So without further ado, let's get into things. There have been a total of 5 women who have officially entered a Grand Prix. The first one to do so was Maria Teresa Di Filippis. Before Formula 1, she showed her abilities where she came second in the 1954 Italian Sports Car Championship. It would be in 1958 where Di Filippis would make history and become the first female entrant in Formula 1 at the Monaco Grand Prix with a privateer Maserati, but she would not end up qualifying for the race as she was 11 seconds back from pole sitter Tony Brooks, but she was not the slowest in the field. Her next appearance was in Belgium the same year and she would achieve her best result in the championship ever with a 10th place finish. She was meant to take part in the French Grand Prix a few weeks later, but according to Di Filippis, the director for the race banned her from taking part, quoting the director saying that the only helmet a woman should wear is the one at the hairdressers, a comment that would rightfully cause an uproar today. She would feature in two more races for the year, in both Portugal and Italy, but she would retire from both races. Di Filippis did also race in the non-championship race of the 1958 Syracuse Grand Prix, where she put in a decent performance to finish fifth. She would only put in a singular entry in 1959 at Monaco, failing to qualify. Because of the deaths of many friends, and in particular the death of John Berra, thanks to the then dangerous barbaric nature of motorsport, Di Filippis turned her back on the sport for good, but she did leave a legacy behind being a pioneer for women in Formula 1. 15 years later, and another Italian woman named Lella Lombardi would make her mark in the sport. Lombardi made a name for herself well before Formula 1. In Italian Formula 3 for the 1968 season, she finished runner-up, then two years later, she comprehensively won the Italian Formula 850 series, winning 4 of 10 races in the championship. She'd win another title in 1971, this time as Formula Ford Mexico champion. Lombardi also finished in the top 10 in both Italian Formula 3 championships in 1972 and 1973, and would also finish 5th in the 1974 European Formula 5000. The Italian would make her F1 debut in the 1974 British Grand Prix in a privateer Brabham, but did not qualify despite being 3.6 seconds outside of Lauda's time, but did also set a faster time in the session than six guys in the field in her only appearance in 1974. She landed a full-time gig in F1 for the 1975 season at March, starting at the third round in South Africa, and would qualify for every race except the Monaco Grand Prix. Although she would only finish in 5 races for the season, she would have a couple notable finishes, including becoming the first woman to score points in Formula 1, where she scored half a point at the Spanish Grand Prix, which unfortunately was marred by Rolf Stollerman's accident causing the death of 4 or 5 spectators and forced the race to finish early. Lombardi also finished an honourable 7th at the Nürburgring, which as we know then, was the most challenging circuit in the world. Although she was able to somewhat keep within the realms of competitive lap times in most instances, she was still comfortably on average about 3-4 to four seconds slower in qualifying than teammate Brambilla, with some outliers including being over 30 seconds behind at the Nürburgring. Additionally, Brambilla managed to win a race, and would have likely scored more points if not for 9 retirements, and he very regularly qualified in the top 10, which included pole position at the Swedish Grand Prix. She only participated in four race weekends in 1976, not qualifying in two of these, and ultimately didn't finish above 12th, achieved at Austria. Lombardi did have a decent racing resume overall, also competing in the Race of Champions, 24 Hours of Le Mans, and many other racing categories before retiring in 1988. She would be the last female Formula 1 driver to compete in a race to this present day. The other three women would never qualify for a race, but would all still be official entrants for their Grand Prix appearances. In Lombardi's last year in the sport, another woman in Davina Galitza would be entered into the 1976 British Grand Prix by Schausport, after impressing in the Schausport International Series the same year, where she would eventually finish fourth overall. But like Lombardi here, Galitza did not qualify, but she was nearly 1.8 seconds quicker than Lombardi, as this was the only F1 Grand Prix in history to have multiple women enter the event. The Brit would try her luck again in a Hesketh in 1978, but couldn't make the final cut after qualifying in both Argentina and Brazil. For someone who had a drastic career change from skiing to motor racing, she still managed to carve out a racing career that would span over two decades in lower formula and endurance categories. Two years later, and in 1980, 
Desiree Wilson would make an appearance in Formula 1. The two-time South African Formula 4 champion also came in the top three multiple times in various Formula Ford 2000 championships, and even held her own in the 1979 Race of Champions, as she made her only F1 appearance in the 1980 British Grand Prix, but ended up getting cut after qualifying. But after finishing 6th in British Formula 1 in 1980, despite missing 5 races and winning at the first Brands Hatch race, Tyrrell offered her a drive for the 1981 South African Grand Prix, which she accepted. Wilson was as high as 6th before retiring, but unfortunately in terms of the record books, this was a non-world championship race in the end due to the Fissa Fokker dispute. She was further offered to drive in future races, but could not secure the finances to do so. Wilson also had a lengthy resume competing in Le Mans, Daytona, IndyCars, and other various championships, predominantly in the 1980s. The most recent female driver to compete in the pinnacle of motorsport was Giovanna Amati. Before F1, Amati mainly applied her trade in numerous Formula 3 series and was in International Formula 3000, where she failed to score a point in 1990 and 1991 before making the jump into Formula 1. Amati secured a seat with the Brabham team in 1992 and would enter the first three rounds of the season, but like Galitza and Wilson, could not qualify for any race. She was sacked soon after. Her most noble achievement after F1 was finishing in third in the 1999 Sports Racing World Cup SR2 category. 22 years later, Susie Wolfe would take part in Free Practice 1 in the 2014 British Grand Prix, although this was not an official entry as she only participated in practice. There have been many women that have tested Formula 1 cars in recent times, like Tatiana Calderon, the late Maria Di Villotta, and of course Susie Wolf. There was even an article 5 years ago about the upcoming Calderon, suggesting that she would score points in F1 one day, but she struggled in both GP3 and F2. So I think it could be a bit before we see women in Formula 1 again. But as more money gets thrown into women's racing, there is a possibility that the next generation might have a female driver in the sport. Juju Noda is a name that you could see in F1 one day, as she keeps on breaking records in Formula 4. And there is now a W series to promote women's racing, so time will only tell if we see a woman in the sport again. I would be very happy to see women in F1 once again on merit, and it would be fantastic to have women have a role model in the sport which can help inspire the younger generation to chase their dreams of being a racing driver. The five women above may have not set the world on fire, but they still managed to live out all their ambitions, even though it was a shorter span for some than others. Do you see women competing in F1 in the future? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content.